Hello everyone and welcome back to To Be Like Christ for our study through Matthew, no, not Matthew, Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. Uh, if you want this handout that you're seeing up on the screen, you can download it in the link down below, as well as a bunch of other resources. Thanks to the patrons and our supporters for making all of this content free. Acts chapter 18. When did the events of this chapter take place? Well, covering quite a bit of ground here, the events of this chapter likely occurred between the years 49 and 54 AD. As far as our characters, we've got Paul. We've been introduced to him. He's been planting churches in the Mediterranean region. He's on a preaching journey right now. Silas, his friend from Jerusalem who joined him. Timothy, his friend from either Lystra or Derby, who joined him. And then we meet Aquila and Priscilla in this chapter. They were a married couple who lived in Corinth, but later they traveled and moved to Ephesus. We have Gallio. Gallio was the proconsul of Achaia. Achaia is what we would consider to be the southern part of modern Greece. And then finally, Apollos. He was a Jew from Alexandria who was teaching Jesus in the city of Ephesus when we meet him. What about our geography? Where did these events happen? Well, Paul left Athens, uh, where he was in chapter 17, and he went to Corinth. And he stayed in Corinth for 1.5 years or one and a half years. And then after that, he left Corinth. He made a stop in Ephesus before continuing on to Antioch in Syria, kind of his home base. According to verse 23, Paul spent a, a good amount of time in Antioch before beginning a new teaching journey and church planting journey through the regions of Galatia and Phrygia. So now for our outline, section one, Paul goes to Corinth, verses one through 11. So Paul left Athens, he goes to Corinth, and Timothy and Silas meet him there in the city. He met a couple named Aquila and Priscilla who worked as tent makers, and he joined them in their profession to make some money and to provide for himself. He taught in the synagogue every Sabbath day, and many or most of the Jews rejected his message, but the Gentiles were very open to it and they paid attention to it. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, as he's described, and many of the Corinthians believed and they were baptized. This was the beginning of the church at Corinth. So if you know about the Corinthian letters, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, uh, those letters were written to this church. So this is the very beginning of all of that. God appeared to Paul in a vision while he was in Corinth, and he told him that he should stay and continue preaching there. And so Paul remained for a year and a half. In verses 12 through 17, Gallio dismisses the troublesome Jews. Oh yes, those pesky Jews from chapter 17 who constantly were giving Paul trouble. They uh, brought accusations against Paul to Gallio, who was the proconsul or kind of the, the ruler of Achaia or southern Greece. And they told him that Paul was, quote, persuading people to worship God contrary to the law. Gallio, though, he didn't really care about religious disputes among the Jews, so he just refused to hear their case and he dismissed them. Verses 18 through 22, Paul goes home to Antioch in Syria. So Paul set sail for Antioch, and he was joined by Aquila and Priscilla. They left Corinth, they made a stop in Ephesus, and Aquila and Priscilla stayed there, but Paul was determined to continue on. He went into the synagogue in Ephesus for a while and was teaching, and the Jews were very receptive to his message. They even asked him to stay a little bit longer, but he said, no, I'm determined to go. So he sailed from Ephesus to Caesarea and then continued to Antioch. The next section is just one verse, but there's a lot in this one verse. It's a verse 23. Paul embarks on another missionary journey. So after spending, quote, some time in Antioch, we're not exactly told how long that was, Paul set out again to visit the disciples in Galatia and Phrygia, people at a ch or churches that he had started and disciples that were made way back on his very first journey back in like chapter 13. And then the last section, verses 24 through 28, this always kind of seems like an aside to me. It's a story about Aquila and Priscilla in Ephesus and somebody that they meet. Uh, they meet a guy named Apollos. So in Ephesus, there's a man named Apollos who is described as, quote, an eloquent man and competent in the scriptures. He taught about Jesus, but he had an incomplete knowledge of all that Jesus had come and had done during his ministry, specifically about Jesus' baptism. He only knew about John the Baptist and his baptism. Recognizing that he was an honest man, Aquila and Priscilla pulled him aside and they, quote, explained to him the way of God more accurately. 
And afterwards, he powerfully refuted the Jews and the critics of Jesus and used the scriptures to prove that Jesus was, in fact, the Christ, the Messiah. And so that's Acts chapter 18. Let's talk about one application from this chapter. Discerning the will of God and the best course of action isn't always easy for Paul or for us in our lives. In the last chapter, God kept Paul from preaching in a few locations that he intended to go and preach in. God sent Paul to Macedonia instead, where he had never intended to go. Well, in chapter 18, Paul visited Ephesus, where people asked him to stay. He had a receptive crowd. The Ephesians wanted him to stay and to teach longer, but he was determined to continue his journey to Antioch, which I'm sure was a difficult decision. And, and may, there may have been some confliction about whether he should stay or not stay. He told the Ephesians that he would return if it was God's will. God doesn't always give us a nice, neat roadmap for our lives. <laughs> we have to remain flexible, ask for wisdom, uh, and always trust that God will lead us where we need to go.